My name's Andrew Weller and I'm going to take you through a case study of the Otway Basin. And in this case study, we're going to see how Petrus's surface modelling can build realistic depth models that can be used to calculate accurate gross rock volumes and oil and or gas in place. The data that we're using for this case study is of the Otway Basin, Victoria, Australia, and it's courtesy of the Department of Primary Industries, Victoria. And what data do we have? We have some 2D seismic with two-way time interpretation to the Eumorella horizon, in addition to some stacking velocities. We have some wells with formation picks down to the Eumorella formation, plus some associated check shot surveys or time depth pairs. We also have some fault interpretation of the Eumorella horizon, and some culture data, and the culture data in this case is just of the coastline of Australia. So I'm just going to jump into a Petrosis map here. I have a title associated with my map. I have a location map which shows me where I am in Australia. I have a scale bar, and I have a tidal block associated with the data that I'm displaying. On my map, I have some 2D seismic and the colour here is of the two-way time interpretation of the Eumorella horizon so it's depicting the highs and lows in two-way time. I have some faults, I have some wells and I have an outline of the coastline. If I just turn that group off and turn this two-way time uh, group on here. What I also have here is a two-way time grid down to the Eumorella horizon that I have pre-prepared. And what I'd like to do is take all of this available data, use it in surface modeling so that I can compute uh, a depth grid and I can use that depth grid in a volumetrics process in Petrosys. So I'm just going to jump into surface modeling here and I've got this workflow that I've been um, that I have created that takes me through that process. So the first thing that I do here is import some stacking velocities. So file exchange stacking velocities. And that's this task here. So what I'm doing is I'm reading an ASCII text file of my uh, stacking velocities and I'm importing them into this Petrosys seismic data file and it's a seismic data file that I have already created. Back to the stacking velocities, if I click on this button here, you'll see the available formats that we can import in Petrosys. So we've made an improvement in the number of formats that we now support. Worst case scenario, you can also specify a custom format here. So column A is my line name, column B is my velocity, etc. I can also preview the data as I import it into my seismic data file. I can see this on a line by line basis, I can check the velocity data, I can check its integrity prior to doing that import. Once I've imported the data into my seismic data file, I can actually calculate velocities based on that stacking velocity information. And I run that from here. And that's this task. So I hook into my seismic data file and my seismic data file now has my two-way time interpretation down to the Eumorella horizon. It's now got some stacking velocity data incorporated or imported into it. And I can now compute average or interval velocity based on that available data. In this case I'm just computing average velocity to the Eumorella horizon. The third step in my workflow is a grid create grid in Petrosys. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking that data that I've imported and calculated and I'm creating a grid of the velocity data based on stacking velocities. I've specified an output grid name here. I've also specified my output CRS. Now I can select any output CRS in Petrosys and Petrosys will reproject that data on the fly to the CRS that I've specified uh, for that grid. 
under the input data now I'm hooking into my seismic data file the average velocity data to the U Morella horizon however as I'm creating a grid in Petrosys if I did have that data sitting in a third-party data store Petrel, SizeWorks, Kingdom etc I could hook into that data and create a grid from it here I've got a couple of other tabs enabled here I've got the clipping tab and I'm clipping my output grid to a polygon that I have uh, already created and it's a polygon of the extent of the two-way time I'm also smoothing my grid and I'm smoothing my grid using a Bartlett 7 smoother here so quite a coarse filter to iron out a lot of the noise or artifacts that I know that I already have in this velocity data so let me just cancel that task I'll tick these first three on and just click the run button here and just OK to overwrite some of these files because I've run through this several times and what I'm doing number one I'm importing the stacking velocities into the seismic data file I just need to select yes to all here uh, yes because I've run this several times the second step is it then calculates the average velocity down to the U Morella horizon and the third step is it creates a grid of that velocity data if I just jump back into my Petrosys map here I'm going to turn off that two-way time grid and turn on the VAV grid from stacking and just do a redraw and you'll see now that I've got this average velocity grid down to the U Morella horizon I also have a color bar associated with it and the color bar is dynamically linked to the grid that I'm displaying so the colors are automatically linked here now as I said earlier I'm fortunate enough to have some velocity data associated with my wells here so I'm just going to jump into the Petrosys well data file editor here and I have already imported some wells into this I've got some header information top hole bottom hole symbology coordinates etc I may have some directional surveys associated with that with these wells I may have some zones or formation picks associated with it too and I have imported some check shot surveys and as I scroll through my wells here in this component to the world data file editor here you'll see that the check shots surveys change I also see a plot associated with the check shots that I've imported now with the Petrosys world data file if I just jump to this zone velocity spreadsheet what Petrosys does is um, obviously that I've selected the Umarella formation here is I have some depth picks down to the Umarella formation I've imported some check shot data into my well data file and when I do that Petrosys automatically computes average velocity and or interval velocity down to those particular formations so you see I've got this column here zone top VAV so I now have this VAV point data in my wells I also have the velocity grid generated from stacking velocities and I can incorporate these components to get my optimal velocity grid in Petrosys so I'm just going to jump back into surface modeling here let me just untick those first three tasks that we've run through this fourth step here is a grid well tie and what I'm doing in this grid well tie is as my input grid file I've got my Umarella average velocity grid from stacking velocities and I'm tying this grid to the velocity data in my well data file so as I scroll down I've hooked into this Petrosys well data file and I'm hooking into that VAV data for the Umarella formation now again if I did have this data that sat in a third party data store so Petrel, DBMAP OpenWorks, Kingdom, etc. I could hook into that here. So I'm bringing these two data types together, and as an output, I get my final tide grid, so the result that I am expecting. I also get a correction or error grid associated with it. I can also again specify my output CRS. 
Under the methods tab, I'm, I'm use, utilizing extrapolated as my method here. And what extrapolated does is it performs well tight across the entire spatial extent um, of the grid that I'm incorporating. The distance method here, if I put in a distance, distance say of 500, that would take a 500 meter radius around the point data and only apply well tight within that distance. We also have a polygon method here and I can specify a polygon file as a zero edge polygon so we can only perform well tie either inside or outside of that polygon. In this case I'm just going to specify extrapolated to perform well tie across the spatial extent. Under the reporting tab I'm ticking on use reporting and I'm going to output a mistie report. So let me just cancel this. I'm going to tick this task on and just run it. I just need to OK because uh, I've run through this several times just to overwrite those files. So it grabs that data. It grabs my point data so the velocity is down well. It grabs my velocity grid and it bends and flex that grid so that it matches up with the velocity data down well. A few things flashed in front of your eyes there. Let me just jump to this mistie report. So I now have this uh, mistie report. And the mistie report gives me the well data here. I've got a Z value associated, in this case, with the velocity data down well. I've got the untied grid value, which is my velocity from stacking velocities. I have a difference before, the value of my tied grid, the difference after, and the correction factor that's been applied. Whenever I see tables like this in Petrisys, I have the ability to search and filter through them. So let me just specify filter. And what I can do here is I can say things like, give me those that are greater than, let's just say, 5 in this case. And it strips back all the available data and just shows me the results of that filter. So it really allows me to get buried into my data. I can see if I've got any well integrity problems in this case, any velocity integrity problems, so that I can jump back into surface modeling, make some changes to my cell size, to any of the clipping, etc., that I'm incorporating, so that I end up with an optimal result. Once here, I can also right click and I can export this data to an ASCII file or to an Excel spreadsheet, which I could ultimately display on my Petrisys map as well. So I'm just going to OK this to close that window. Once I've performed that well tie, the fifth step here is to perform some grid processes arithmetic. And what I'm doing in grid processes arithmetic is I'm grabbing that ultimate velocity grid that I've now generated, bringing it together with my two-way time grid, performing an average velocity calculation to grab my depth grid. When I'm performing arithmetic in Petrisys, there are some templates available to me. We've got some simple arithmetic, add, subtract, divide, etc. between grids. I've got some grid operations which allow me to clip grids to minimum maximum values. I can replace missing values. I've got some geoscience examples. I can compute the isochron. I can compute true stratigraphic thickness, etc. And right down the bottom, I've got some depth conversion examples, average interval velocity, V naught K type formulas here. And what I've done in this case is I've specified using average velocity and it inputs that formula here. When I click on the down button, my variables are then populated and I hook into the velocity grid that I calculated in my well tie, my existing two-way time grid, and my output depth grid, so the depth grid that I am creating in this instance. So let me just cancel. And I'm just going to run through this task, and it's just going to perform the well tie and grid processes arithmetic. Just OK to overwrite those files. So after it's computed my well tie, it jumps in, it does some arithmetic, takes that optimal velocity grid, takes the original two way time grid, and calculates my depth grid. That process has finished. I'm just going to jump into my Petrisys map here. 
let me just turn that group off here let me turn on this group and do a redraw and this group is my VF, so my average velocities from both wells and stacking velocities. So this is the output that I created when I performed that well tie. You'll see as well here, uh, I might just be able to zoom in a bit, let me just do a very quick redraw, is that I've also got the velocity values at, at that point data source, so from that well data. If I go back to my full extents, you'll also see again that I've got a color bar that's associated with that velocity grid. So I took that velocity grid along with my two-way time grid and I computed a final depth grid here. So I'll just do a quick redraw and you'll see this is my final depth grid with my faults uh, incorporated into that process, the color bar associated with depth, etc. Now that I have that depth grid, I can take it into a volumetrics process in Petrasys. And what I'm going to do here I'm just going to open up another pre-canned map that I've got. Let me just open my display list here. And what I've got is another location map, and I've actually zoomed into a locality here in the Otway Basin, just in using some of that data that we've already calculated. What I'm displaying here on my map, I've got some contours, and the contours are based on the depth grid uh, that we have just computed. I've got some faults, and I've got some fault blocks some hypothetical fault blocks here. And I'm going to take all this available data and I'm going to throw it into a volumetrics process in Petrasys to compute volume based on this depth grid. So I'm just going to jump back into surface modeling and that takes us to the last part of my workflow. And the last part is computing volumetrics grid based slices. So if I just open up this task here, when computing volumetrics in Petrasys, we can compute from a top grid, a top and base, or a thickness grid. In this case, we're using a top grid because we, we've computed just the Umarella uh, depth grid based on all that, all that available data. Under the Compute tab, I can specify a slice thickness here, and the slice thickness are vertical slices through the structure uh, and that's what's depicted or shown in, my, in the final report that I generate, and you'll see that shortly. This does not affect the calculation. I can also specify a cell refinement level, and you'll see if I just jump to the top here that I've got a 500 by 500 um, cell size grid. I'm putting in a cell refinement of 10, so it reduces that cell size down to 50 by 50. So as I get to the edge of my grid, or the edge of the area over which I want to compute volume, I get a lot more accuracy around that edge. I've got some units. I am specifying million barrels here, but I have some other units that I can specify if I wish. And also output areas. Under levels, I've just specified a reference level here of negative 1930, and I've used this as my hypothetical uh, contact, my gas water contact here. I can also incorporate some scale factors. I've got a scale factor of 1, and a scale factor of 1 means that I will compute gross rock volume from this top grid. If I click on the Compute button here, it allows me to enter a value for porosity, hydrocarbon saturation, average net to gross, etc. So it influences the volume that's being calculated and takes me past that GRV calculation. It moves me into uh, oil and gas in place. Under polygons, I can subdivide the area over which I want to compute volume and I'm incorporating the fault blocks here. So I'm going to get five separate outputs based on that information. And the last tab I'd like to show you here is the Reports tab. So I'm going to generate reports. I'm going to output my report as a web page. And the output report type is of XML. I can actually generate standard text reports here as well, which I could then incorporate in, in Excel, etc. So let me just OK that task and just OK to, um, to jump in and recompute that volume.
So it grabs my top depth grid that I've computed in these first five processes here. It then takes that cell size and it subdivides my 500 by 500 cells um, into 50 by 50 cells so I get that more accurate representation around the edge. It then computes volume based on that top grid and it subdivides it based on those hypothetical fault blocks that we showed you um, uh, on the map. Once the calculation has finished, it jumps into my web browser here, and I, this is just Google Chrome, so a standard web browser, and it gives me my output volumetrics report. So you'll see here I've got a value across all polygons for volume, and as I scroll down here, I've got a value for fault block 1, a value for fault block 2, etc. And as I scroll down, I get buried deeper um, into the actual calculation and the results from the calculation. The view that we have here, so this is for fault block one, the view that we have, this is my slice thickness and this is um, uh, the effect that it has. If I put in a larger slice thickness in this case, I will see bigger blocks here in this graph. It also changes the area depth pairs that I will see on the right hand side here. So as you'll see, I'm getting um, a cumulative um, uh, calculation of volumetrics. Okay, so I'd just like to jump back into uh, PowerPoint now that we have computed volumetrics and just um, finish things off. So thanks for your um, attention, thanks for watching this case study of the Otway Basin. Um, if you'd like more information, we actually deliver regular training courses right through from beginner and intermediate courses to advanced courses, depth and velocity modeling covering some of the aspects that I've just run through. We've got a geological mapping and modeling course as well. We, can, we have a, an account, accountable volumes course. We can also run custom courses or in-house courses based on any requirements or needs that you may have in Petrosys. We also have videos. We put our videos on our website and on our YouTube channel Petrosys Videos. And we're also um, out there in social media. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and of course YouTube. Thank you very much for your attention.